Hey everyone, Jason here from Off The Beaten Path and this video is been a long time coming. Uh, it's footage I actually shot back in April and this is day two of a solo trip through the high country so I'm starting this video from Tom Grogan Campground heading down Davies Plain Hut track to Davies Plain Hut and then continuing on from there via Charlie Creek Hut then McCarthy's track and down to the Round Mountain uh, down to Round Mountain and the Poplars Campground and then on to Limestone Creek Track um, finishing up at the Limestone Creek Camping Area and Limestone Creek Hut so heading off here early in the morning from Tom Grogan Campground this was actually my first visit to Tom Grogan it's a massive campground there's toilet facilities um, in a couple of spots um, there's a number of campsites uh, sort of along the river frontage um, in close proximity to the long drop toilets and then a huge open area in the middle as well where you can sort of just about get a spot wherever you like um, the local population of kangaroos are extremely friendly so yeah, when you come back off the loop road here, this is the main access road down to the river. Um, so yeah, turning right here and heading down to the Murray River crossing. Now at this particular time, the uh, water level is pretty low. This was actually filmed just before the track closed in 2021. Uh, so in April of 2021 so yeah it's taken me a little while to actually get this footage together and edit it um, you can see there the water's uh, quite clear uh, not too high at all uh, so it's a pretty easy crossing at uh, this particular time so um, the day before this I had actually gone through over Mount Gibbo and Mount Pinabar and um, also um, Mount Sassafras but um, I've actually done a more recent trip there with a lot better footage so I've decided not to use the old footage um, so that'll be an upcoming video so once we uh, cross the Murray there from Tom Grogan um, we're basically heading uh, straight south here um, onto the Davies Plain hut track so it's um, there's a lot of signs at the start of the track saying you got to have a full wheel drive vehicle I guess because of how close Tom Grogan is to the Alpine Way and it's pretty accessible um, so there's a lot of signs warning you know it's a four wheel drive track um, by all means don't take your you know all wheel drive vehicle in road tyres but at the time I drove it it was not difficult so this little river crossing here is just before the Buckwong Creek camping area which is about uh, two or three k's south of Tom Grogan. So, in the unlikely event that Tom Grogan's full, or in the uh, if you're planning to camp at Buckwong and that's full, Tom Grogan's not too far away. So, as you can see, you know it's a pretty easy drive for this uh, this first section. Um, it was yeah, the track was in really good condition. There hadn't been a lot of rain at all. Um, so, you know. Honestly, I could have probably driven 90% of this track in two-wheel drive. So, you know, if you find yourself in this part of the high country, I definitely recommend it. It's it's a really nice drive, um, and Davies Plain Hut is well worth seeing. Um, so, yeah, um, the track you can certainly see that with heavy use or when there's been a lot of rain, sections of the track would definitely. Um, develop some ruts and it would be a, a more challenging. Um, this this section here particularly you can see it's a fairly much a clay base but you know when I'm driving it here really solid good traction not difficult at all and you can see uh, still you know we talk about it a lot on a lot of these videos that the regrowth from the uh, bushfires at the end of 2019 or early 2020 I think I said at the start that this was April 2020, it was April 2021, um, yeah, COVID. So yeah, you can hear the car working a little bit there, um, these, these climbs are not super steep or anything, it's yeah, pretty easy driving most of the way and, and, and fairly scenic as well. Um, so as I said, well worth the effort. Um, from Buckwong Creek camping area to Davies Plain Hut, it's about 24 k's. So it's going to take you um, about an hour from Buckwong Creek campground or a bit over an hour from Tom Grogan 
um, to get to Davy's Plain Hut most likely. Again, just one of the one of the climbs along the Davies Plain Hut track, and yeah, it was not a difficult drive at all. Probably why a lot of the videos on Davies Plain Hut track don't actually show much of the track because um, I think being such an iconic hut to visit, it's uh, generally a pretty well maintained track. See there are a lot of clean up post the bushfires uh, with plenty of uh, tree trunks fairly close to the track and the track does work its way along these ridge lines. You don't get, uh, you can probably see a little bit more at the moment or at the time that this was filmed anyway um, with the amount of vegetation that the bushfires have cleared out but uh, even in the, the six months or so since this was actually shot, um, yeah, there's been a lot more regrowth. I was keen to get this video actually edited and, uh, and put up. I, I don't have as much time for editing as I would like, um, but uh, it's the time of year when Davies playing hut track. Uh, by the time you're watching this, it should actually be back open again. So a little bit of a steep climb there with some off camber crossings but again nothing particularly difficult just a steady climb up to the actual Davies Plain Plateau still got a ways to go at this point starting to get uh, a little closer again it's as you can see it's basically just a almost a two-wheel drive dirt and gravel road most of the way it's only when you actually get closer to the hut that there's a few obstacles that make it a little more challenging you can see here the, the fire damage that's come through very quickly with the bottoms of all these trees burnt but it's good to see the bush recovering. So this is um, one of the parts that's a little bit more interesting, it's a little bit off camera, there's a bit of a rut on the right hand side there, uh, the track actually goes over this little rise and around to the left so Again, I can imagine uh, when the tracks had a, a bit more traffic that uh, sections like this could be a bit more challenging. But there hadn't been much rain for the, the few days leading up to this trip and as you can see there's not a lot of water around on the track. There were a few sections that were a little bit soft, but most of it was uh, pretty easy going. This being my first time actually ever driving Davies Plain Hut track, I, I really had no idea how far along the hut was, was going to be. Um, I was following along on the HEMA, but uh, you sort of get to the point with the low res maps that I run on the HEMA usually that uh, it's like, I should be able to see it, am I there? Um, it is a little further in than you, than you actually think, particularly as you're coming through the bush here, you can see that the... Uh, plateau is actually opening up. By this point I was actually expecting to see the hut just up here um, but it's still still a few k's away. So at this point you're coming into the the Davies Plain and you're at around 14-1500 meters uh, which is pretty amazing. Now you can see here there's a decent sized rut on the right hand side of the track there so Originally I was going to just drive on the left of it and then 
I did think that there was a bit of a risk of uh, sliding into it, so I've decided to take the safer option and actually span that, put one tyre either side. So this section is probably one of the only sections that was a little bit tricky. You can see there's a bypass track here. Again, because I was by myself, I elected not to drive the bog hole and potentially get stuck because um, there, there's nothing there that you could winch off and I didn't want to spend too much time with the max tracks and the shovels. Um, you can see there's even a bypass around the bypass, but that um, that black soil there was a bit soft, but nothing you couldn't drive through fairly comfortably. Driving across this plane here was just amazing. It's quite a large open plane that extends both sides of the track quite a bit. Um, obviously where they used to run the cattle up here. And again, as you're making your way through these little stands of trees, you're like, where's the hut? Where's the hut? Um, as I said earlier, it's, it is further in than, you, than you're expecting. So again, you can see this section of track here has um, had a little bit of erosion damage from water and you can see it's a bit of a clay base. So when there has been rain, it's, it's going to be a bit softer, but in the condition it was in at this time, it was quite easy to drive and uh, there's a little stream running through here with, uh, with a small crossing as well. Pretty sure that's one of the tributaries, tributaries of the Davies Plain Creek. And again, you can see as we're getting closer to the hut, the, uh, the, the tracks here have had a bit more traffic, a little bit more worn, a few more ruts, um, and it's actually worth probably putting your car in four wheel drive. Yeah, well, you, you have the odd section like that. Um, the vast majority of this track is just really easy going, or as I say, it certainly was at the time that I was driving it here. And this is probably, this was actually a, a three day trip. Um, I didn't get as much footage as I would have liked, um, but it was really a scouting trip as well, planning for future, future trips that, uh, that I will film for the channel. Um, so yeah, three days solo in the high country, um, which was pretty amazing, but because of that, pretty much all the footage is, and being older footage and an older trip, it's pretty much all shot with the GoPro on the car. So actually coming up to the clearing where Davies Plain Hut is, that's the hut there, just on the, on the right hand side of that clearing up ahead. Uh, and as you can see, there were a few people camping here. I'd actually run into these guys on the tracks the day before up on Mount Gibbo. Um, really friendly bunch of people there's the Davies Plain hut so again being a bit of an older trip this one uh, and it has taken me a while to to get the footage together I didn't actually take as much footage as I would these days um, even with the um, even with the phone or something like that so um, yeah so back on the tracks heading south out of Davies Plain hut still on the Davies Plain track um, so from here and this initial section is a little bit, a uh, little bit chewed up. Um, so from here we're heading south on Davies Plain track down to Charlie Creek Hat Hut. Well, what used to be Charlie Creek Hut, that hut was actually destroyed in bushfires some years ago. And then from there onto McCarthy's track um, and over to the Limestone Creek track. And I did sort of make a spur of the moment decision to just take a side trip down to the Poplar's campground to check that out. So as you can see, a little bit of a climb here. Now the guys back at uh, Davies Plain Hut did say that traction wasn't real good here and it was a bit slippery, but that was the day before and there was just a few spits of rain when they were coming down here. Um, so, you know, just that top coat of rain had made it a bit slippery. It had been sunny all morning. By this time it's probably around 9 30 10 o'clock the sun's been up for a bit and um, it was dry and yeah no no issues at all climbing up there
Just the odd, uh, the odd soft spot in the track here and there. But as it always is, the scenery in the high country is just amazing. It it changes from fairly densely wooded areas like this with the um, alpine gums to um, you know huge vistas just looking across the the hills. This is definitely a, a trip I'll, I'll do again sometime and um, take a bit more time. Um, don't know when that'll be, but um, yeah, look, as I said, if you find yourself in this part of the high country, I definitely recommend it. For the most part, these tracks were all very, very drivable. Um, you know, keeping in mind conditions do change. So from Davies Plain Hut through to Charlie Creek Hut, you're, you're looking at um, probably about probably about 14 k's. So not quite an hour, probably 45 minutes or so. And again, while there's sections like this that are a bit rutted um, and a bit off camber, bit of a wheel lift there. As you saw, uh, the joys of driving IFS. I have to say, I, I have, um, I love the patch, um, love the clearance with IFS, um, but I've definitely seen the difference um, being on the tracks with some friends that have got IFS front, solid axle, rear. The difference having that solid axle in the rear for a bit more flex makes in terms of keeping the wheels on the ground. So, um, yeah, look. Um, very happy with the IFS all round, um, but it's um, it's a different style of driving. Certainly, um, you know, in, in some ways, I think the solid axles are a little easier because you you keep your wheels on the ground a lot more. So yeah, right up on the plateau here, um, so up around that 1600 metres, um, and you can see the, uh, the um, I think they're snow gums, the same sort of stunted gum trees you see up in, um, around Mount Buller and up around Hotham and other parts of the high country. And not that it's really coming out on camera, but it's, uh, amazing views both sides of the track here as well. You probably will see some of that shortly as we get a little bit further along. It's definitely a part of the high country you could well and truly take your time. There's, there's so many spots that you could pull up and set up a camp if you wanted to. Um, between Tom Grogan you've got the Buckwang Buckwong Creek camping area, then you've got a camp camping area at Davies Plain Hut itself, um, and then the the, uh, the next area, Charlie Creek Hut, that we're not too far from here. So again, you can see a bit of undulation to the track, um, but you know, nothing that is overly difficult to drive at all. Um, through this section of the drive, barely lost traction. It was just great to be out in the high country, enjoying the scenery and, and seeing more of the bush. So that's the Kings Plain track there, um, which uh, heads down to a camp spot on the Upper Murray. Uh, on the Vic New South Wales border so we've kept going straight ahead there I've left that track to explore another day um, so straight ahead of us now you can see some of that view that I've sort of had glimpses of on both sides of the track up to this point um, this section of track's actually a little bit rocky took it a little little bit slow um, but yeah definitely love to get back and check out that Kings Plain track uh, and the campsite down the bottom there another time might save that for the uh, the next trip up this way. 
as I said at the start, it goes without saying, pretty much all these tracks right through this part of the high country are all seasonally closed. So, yeah, as it's come up on screen there, we're just um, on the descent now down towards the clearing where Charlie's, Charlie Creek Hut used to be. Um, still a campsite there, uh, and it'd be a great place to... Uh, actually um, set up camp if you found yourself in this part of the high country so yeah just through one of the seasonal gates there that they do close and lock and you can see as we work our way down here opening up to uh, quite a nice clearing that's scraping noise if that's coming through uh, I'd actually managed to get something lodged up behind one of the plastic mud guards on this trip um, and it was rubbing on the tyre on when I was turning the wheel a certain way so that's that's what that noise is. So there's a few spots uh, just back there on the right there was a bit of an open area but the main camping area is actually just up ahead here. see on the right there there's quite a, a large open area um, and a fire pit already built in there nice level ground there were a few soft spots here um, but yeah it'd be a great place to set up camp uh, up on the high plains in this part of the high country so after a brief stop there uh, from Charlie Creek Hut headed sort of south down to an intersection where Buckwong track um, Davies Plain track and McCarthy's track all intersected with each other so we turned left there I, I didn't actually have the GoPro running at that point so the footage you're looking at now we're heading down McCarthy's track um, towards the Limestone Creek track And those hills we're looking at on the other side there are actually over in New South Wales. So we're in Victoria at the moment um, and heading pretty much uh, due east at this point. So sections of this track were reasonably steep. But um, again through here there was nothing overly difficult to drive. And as I worked my way along here I got to the turn off to the Limestone Creek track and saw that the Poplar's campground was actually only probably one and a half kilometres from that turn off uh, so in the end I did decide to go down and, and check that out but we're not there yet so this is actually Max Creek Road turn off which is just another one of the tracks here so we continued straight ahead um, down towards Limestone Creek track and as I was saying the Poplar's campground and Again, I didn't originally film coming down, but it was it was a bit of an interesting drive, so I decided to film it. I didn't get a lot of footage of this campground, but there's basically uh, campsites at both ends of this campground. It's not a big campground, uh, and there's no long drop toilet or anything like that, um, but it is right on the river with really good river access. As you can see, the access track is um, reasonably steep. Um, but assuming you got a camper trailer in here, and that's a whole nother story, but um, you could actually get a camper trailer down here, I, I believe, uh, if you've got a suitable vehicle with trailer brakes and all the rest of it. So um, this, this track was in quite good condition, uh, like all the tracks on this particular trip. And just heading back along to the Limestone Creek track. Now coming up here, I did actually see a side track just there. There's a sign there that says helipad. So again, I thought, I'm here. I, I drove that up to the helipad. That's what that photo is there. That's up on the helipad. And it was actually a, a bit of a rutted track. So I decided to film with the GoPro coming back down. Um, it was probably the most forward drive track I'd I'd driven since the the sections back near Davies Davies Plain Hut. So um, 
yeah, decided to film this. It's pretty short, only a couple of minutes, so uh, this is just along that track, which is um, the helipad track. Obviously when it rains up here they get a fair bit of water running down this track creating those erosion gullies. Um, there's, there's certainly options to choose wheel placements where clearance isn't too much of an issue. And we are now on the Limestone Creek track working our way through to the Limestone Creek camping area and limestone creek hut so sections of this were actually a little bit challenging um, this section here is one of those you can see on the left there is a much more difficult line which i didn't take and on the right here is a much easier line which i did take so it was quite a big rock step um, that was undercut on that left hand side would have been a lot of fun but again i'm in the vehicle by myself and i've got no other vehicles with me so i've i've taken the easy option here and um, and driven around that obstacle. It's a lot easier to run the winch out when you've got somebody with you, that's for sure. Now this track was um, was a lot of fun to drive. Um, on the whole, it was a little more challenging than the other sections of track. Um, you can see here some decent sized ruts. And certainly if you were hitting this track after some some decent rainfall, I think it'd be soft and slow and, and challenging. But um, yeah, although there were some ruts and that section's a bit off camber, it was by and large pretty easy going. Um, you can see where the track gets its name as um, there's some of that white limestone gravel forming the track up. It was pretty bright and glary, probably coming through on the camera as well. So along this track you basically go up over ridge after ridge after ridge. So you go up the ridge and then down the next side and then you climb the next one. Some of these were actually some of the steepest tracks I've driven in the high country. Um, and the GoPro was out of battery and they were steep enough that I didn't actually want to stop on the track and change the GoPro battery over. So the steepest sections of the Limestone Creek track I actually didn't get to film. So just keep that in mind. Um, so at this point we're working our way down to the actual limestone creek where there's a, a little bit of a crossing down here. And like so many of the crossings you sort of work your way down and there's the, the small rises that you cross over to stop the water running down the track. down to it now I think and again we're a little bit lower here so the bush is very different to up on the high plane yeah here we are just crossing this is reasonably wide but very shallow at this particular time um, unlike a lot of the crossings in the high country it wasn't a rocky gravel bottom it was it was more silt than anything but quite firm when I've driven through on this particular time and as I was saying just before, you're out of that little river crossing, you're straight into another climb. And these these hills just kind of kept going and going and going. And they weren't all super steep. This one's steep enough, but not super steep. But as I said, there was, there was certainly one or two that I, I quite vividly remember were some of the steepest tracks I've driven anywhere in the high country. Uh, steeper than sections of Billy Goats Bluff, for sure. So you can see there, we've climbed up that little hill little flat spot and then we're we're straight into another long hill that just keeps going and going not sure what i was doing at this point slowing down but taking in the scenery thinking about changing a battery in the camera really not sure but this is one of probably four or five of these hills where you just climbing 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 and then you're down the other side um, so this track was actually quite a lot of fun to drive um, 
I'd definitely come this way again and, and again try and get some better footage of it for you guys next time. And you can see that limestone gravel. And it's fairly evident that, uh, again, when it rains, you get a lot of water uh, softening the track up and creating those erosion gullies. So this is definitely a track I think that the condition would change from time to time, and it'd be one to be a little bit wary of, I think. So there you go, we've, we've reached the top of that particular hill. And here we are working our way down the other side of one of the other ridge lines here. So Limestone Creek track was about 18 k's from the turnoff. Um, so again, it's a it's probably a good solid hour uh, at least to to get through on this track down to the Limestone Creek camping area and hut. Now. I was actually going back to Tom Grogan via a different route, so I didn't really spend a lot of time down here. Um, as I said, this was more of a scouting trip for me, just looking at what the tracks were like and planning future trips uh, and checking out some of the campgrounds in the area. So I think at this point we're actually getting down towards the, the lower section and again another little creek crossing of the Limestone Creek. As you can see there, not deep, deep at all. And this later section of the track sort of wends its way along the river uh, and was quite a nice drive. Had the odd small climb in it but um, nothing too big or too steep in this section. Now this must be one of the last crossings before we, and, and climbs before we get to the actual Limestone Creek campground. Again, just a long, steady climb. This particular one, not super steep, but steady. Now again, I I think here we are probably on the approach, final approach down to the, the actual campground area. I didn't get as much footage down there as I probably would have liked to have gotten, um, but it's a great camping area, definitely one I want to go back to. Uh, it's not super close to where I'm based, so it'll definitely be part of a, a longer trip for sure, I think. Um, but heaps and heaps of camp spots. I was pretty surprised actually, particularly when I was driving the exit road out to the main road on the south here which um, is the limestone road that takes you back into Benambra um, I was pretty surprised at uh, the number of people that had brought camper trailers down in here um, because even coming in from that south side it was still pretty steep So the main designated camping area is just up here on the right, but um, and I think that was the long drop toilet block on the left there. Um, there's actually a number of areas in here where you can camp. I think the guys I saw with the camper trailers were a little bit further around in another section. So um, yeah, look, this was a great trip. Um, highly recommend that you check out Davies Plain Hut, um, Tom Grogan, uh, and the tracks in between. Um, I think um, Limestone Creek track, all of these, it would be great to have at least one other vehicle with you. Um, and as you can see here, this is uh, just one of the 
one of the hills that you climb on the way out so this is heading south um, from the campground out to the actual limestone road um, so not a not a difficult climb in, in a loaded up four-wheel drive but towing a uh, camper trailer as well would certainly make that a little more challenging And you can see another one coming up, up ahead here as well. So this particular uh, trip, I went from here down to Native Dog flat camping area and then was going to do Cobra's track. That was actually closed. Uh, so I ended up making my way back to Tom Grogan by going over Mount Misery and, um, and then t taking the Mount Hope Road and the Tom Grogan track back to Tom Grogan. So maybe I will put that together as a video, um, not sure, but thanks for watching as always. So like this video if you liked it and always pleased to see your comments down below, ask any questions about this track or the area that you might have. So thanks everybody for watching.